Alana, I'll take your lead on when you think we should when we should start when you think that the right number of attendees is is here. Okay, um, so uh, there are a good number of you here. Uh, but there are some apparently still to arrive, but if we start, because we have a set amount of time and I don't think there's any benefit to us waiting any further. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Damien Scott Masson. I'm the Regional Director for CAMPS. Um, and you have with us today two further people. Chris, could you flick on a slide? Okay, um, we have two other people here, Chris, who's our Head of Education, and Katie, who's based in the UK um, and works directly with schools there. All of us are ex-teachers. Uh, sorry, no, Katie and I are ex-teachers, Chris is a current teacher. Um, okay, I see my role here today as giving a little bit of context to what we're talking about. Predominantly, you're going to hear from Chris, who's going to explain to you real world studies, uh, what we see that as being and how we work with our groups uh, in the UK, in America and Australia uh, and in Canada. Um, in order to do that, real world studies is so closely entwined with the way we work as a company and we're a little bit different, a little unique in our structure. So I'm gonna very quickly, and I apologize, it'll be rattling through a bit, but I'm gonna very quickly give give us that context so that we can uh, you can understand what real world studies in is through understanding who we are um camps is uh is based in the uk and we can have, we have offices in the yellow dots here you can see offices in uh, the united arab emirates where chris is and in australia um, and then the other coloured dots are the regions, we call them the delivery regions, they're the, they're the regions in which we receive groups. Um, to explain a little bit about that, my role here is, is I have a response, I'm talking to you from Costa Rica and I have responsibility for Latin America. Um, in each region there's an equivalent of me, uh, Simon in, in Africa and Rory in Asia. Um, but apart from that, the people that we employ in those regions, the people that run those countries, come from those countries. Um, the way we like to characterize it is that we receive groups from countries, such as the United Kingdom or Canada, into these countries, and we have a health and safety structure and a, and a company structure in that country, which I represent for Latin America, but otherwise those the people working for me are all Peruvian, Ecuadorian or, or Costa Rican. Um, I think that idea of receiving groups is very important because it, it really, there really is a difference between that and the idea simply that they are sent from their country, from their school to, uh, to, uh, to another country. Um, Chris, could you uh, go on, please? Um, as I said, I'm going to rattle through this quickly and I, and I do apologise for that. But I want to try and, 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 and set a framework so that you can understand how we how we operate. Um, we call what we do the camps effect. Um, the camps effect is, is an attempt to encapsulate what is a coherent structure in which all our activities, all our decisions and our processes are, are framed. Uh, and this graphic sets that out with the company in the central circle and if you like the company's activities and the communities on the on the outer circle um, the core premise of the company philosophy is that we have long-term relationships with the communities in which we work um, these are communities in which we seek a basis of equality um, and that is a framework 
in which we um, ensure that projects and all our activities in the communities in which we're working are worthwhile, as this graphic says, are offering fair opportunities to people through, for instance, employment or through support in creating income generating schemes, for instance, or um, our, and that our contributions, the contributions that we make are meaningful. We do projects in communities. Those projects may be hard projects, construction. Uh, they may be soft projects, such as um, uh, teaching, teaching English or teaching uh, ICT computer skills, that sort of thing. Um, and we do that through our camps, and I'll explain in a little bit uh, what a camp is. Um, but I, important to understand in that, is that whilst we are doing projects, those projects have been identified with the community. So there's a, a, a reciprocity that we seek in the relationship between us and the community. Um, the community are never passive recipients of any activities that we are engaged in. Um, at the very core of what we do are the community. Um, and they are as much involved in any decision about what our projects might be as we are. Within that also, they are offering from their side uh, an educational benefit to the students through sharing cultural ideas, through sharing their way of life, through um, interacting with the students so that the student leaves having created a positive impact in the community themselves, but also they leave and they've received a positive impact in their lives and in their education from the members of the community. Um, the graphic is an attempt to summarize that. Um, and as I said at the beginning of this, the whole of that, that, that uh, relationship that it's for the long term. That long term needs to be finite because otherwise, and this has been discussed in, in other forum, um, otherwise you, uh, you stray into areas of potential dependence. Um, but we do believe that the only way to maintain a relationship, the only way to do credible project work and have a, a meaningful relationship with the community is to be there for, for years. Um, at the eight o'clock point on the graphic that you're looking at, um, uh, it says uh, developing young people and I think really um, what we're attempting, what we're talking about today with real world studies is within that part of the graphic, in that part um, in which we're looking at that impact on the students. There would be another time and there is plenty of information that you can have to find out about what those projects are and how we work with the communities but today we really are focusing on, on that aspect of the activity in which we're engaged, which is the development of, of young people. Um, the, there are various other points on the graphic that refer to students obviously creating global citizens um, and authentic experiences, uh, for instance, um, because it is getting into those communities um, that we believe offers the, 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 is the great strength of what we can do when we're working with a school group. Um, uh, could you flick on this, Chris? We, I wanted to show this slide because I want to give you a sense. That I'm, I'm conscious that, that we're not, um, that, that, as I said, we're a unique organization and not necessarily terribly well known yet in Canada and so um, I wanted to give a sense of our longevity. We, we're approaching our 20th anniversary uh, when we get to 2022, um, and we've had 30,000 volunteers um, traveling with us and other numbers on this screen that I'm not going to read to you and insult you. Um, uh, the, the company was founded in, in 2002 in Kenya uh, by Stuart Rees Jones with the idea that I've just explained about the longevity of the relationship with the community. Um, and it expanded through Asia and, and into Latin America, and we've been here about nine years now. Um, in each case, what we've done is we've leased or bought land from a community. Um, there might be two, three, four communities in each country in which we work. Um, and we've established a camp 
And before I finish speaking and hand over to Chris, I want to make sure that I've explained to you what a camp is. Uh, it's in our name, uh, Camps International. Um, and I think it, it, it's sometimes a little bit difficult for people to understand what do we mean by a camp? What is a camp? Uh, and Chris, if you could flip on um, that slide, thank you. Um, as I said, we lease or buy property from a community and we then build a camp um, with that community using uh, local traditional building styles, using local materials, using local builders. Um, and one of the uh, ethical points of our existence is to try and generate employment in, in the countries in which we're working. Um, and those, those camps are designed to be a, a, a little home away from home for the student groups that visit us. Um, a camp can have a capacity of anywhere from uh, 20 or 30 to sort of 80 uh, uh, students in it. And quite a lot of our UK groups travel in the UK summer, July and August, in which case the camps are, are very full. Um, uh, sometimes they're tented, but mostly they're, they're dormitory buildings with three or four people sharing a room. Um, the, the soul of a camp is its social space, um, and that's where the students eat. Uh, food cooked by again by members of the local community uh, in both Western and, and local styles, um, where they chill out and where we uh, also do elements of real world studies within the camp. So that that, that social space is like a, a sometimes a classroom, sometimes a dining room, sometimes a place for, for students to chill out and play cards. Um, the camps are frequently in places that are exceptionally beautiful. Um, uh, I have responsibility for camps that overlook the Sacred Valley in Peru. Uh, we have camps just outside Angkor Wat in Cambodia and, and overlooking Savo National Park. Um, but uh, they are our spaces. They are spaces. Um, uh, it, it's a different concept to to homestays, but it is very much. But they so they are very much a part of the community with with community members as employees, and cooks, and a place of interaction between student groups and the community. Okay, today our job. That's a bit of context. Um, and today our job is to talk to you about real world studies and in, in just a second I'm going to introduce you to, to Chris so he can, he can talk to you about that in a little bit of detail. Very, very quickly, I'm going to explain to you where this comes from. We are all of a globe suffering from COVID and its consequences. Uh, and so um, what started as an idea within our, within our organization from someone called Kim, who you saw a photograph of earlier, was that we could possibly um, reach out to schools and uh, create a connection between our camps and the projects that we're doing and the classroom. That idea very quickly became much, much bigger because we thought that it was a great idea that what we could do is have virtual expeditions um, for those students that can't travel because we, none of us can travel at the moment. And we started working with schools that we already have a relationship with, so they were doing that instead of traveling with us. But then the, the, the value that we felt was available to us and to our students in creating those links to the communities um, became very apparent very quickly and so what we're trying to do now with real world studies which is is a relatively new project to us it's a 2020 project um, is make sure that we are exploiting for the benefit of students across the world honestly um, the potential for contact with the communities in which we work so that the real world studies acts as a virtual expedition um, in that the students within their classrooms are looking at academic subjects that they might normally be looking at but can have a, 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 a dialogue with people in communities in, for, in which those issues they're looking at in their academic work are real and immediate in their daily lives but also it can be a preparation for travel because it means that when the student goes to the community goes on expedition what they have is a deep detailed understanding of the issues that they're going to be addressing when they get there and finally when they're on an expedition, 
we can continue that academic education as they really get a deep, deep understanding of the issues that face that community, what we're trying to do in our work with that community, and what the student can do in those terms as global citizens. I hope that's given some sort of context to, to the background to what we're doing. And now I will let Chris explain to you what real world studies is. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Damien. And uh, thank you for everyone for joining us uh, this evening. Um, as Damien said, my name is Chris Orr and I'm uh, the Head of Education for Campus International and Real World Studies. Uh, I'm also a practicing uh, geography teacher and fellow of the Royal Geographical Society in London. Um, and together with uh, the Campus International team, uh, we have put together this What is Real World Studies presentation that I will talk through with you now uh, for the next half an hour or so. Um, to discuss well, what is this Real World Studies program that, that we, have, we have created to showcase the, the, the campus network and ultimately to get students learning about the real world. Um, please do uh, ask questions uh, throughout this uh, presentation uh, using the chat function on this GoToWebinar and at the end we will try and answer as many of those questions as possible. Unfortunately, we don't have the time um, to um, allow you to unmute to ask those personally, but we will do our best to try and uh, an answer any questions that, that you may have. So what is real world studies? And uh, as, as Damien was saying here, um, this is a program designed to support teachers in not just enriching and global curriculums across the entire world, but actually enhancing our students' skills and knowledge of our planet. We want to create a generation of uh, young people who are global citizens. And as you saw with that, that uh, graphic that Damien showed you a few minutes ago is really a key part of what Campus International is about. So we really think there's four key aspects to what real world studies is all about. And this is kind of the, the backing behind why we came up with it. We want to teach students about global issues using real life materials. We want to bring the real life back into the classrooms again. Ultimately, we want to support teachers. This, and I know I'm, I'm going through this exactly the same myself, has been one of the most challenging years for education um, in, in history. And we want to support teachers in bringing global issues to students. These materials also are gonna underpin our expeditions and underpin the, the work that World Strides are doing as well, um, in, in, in launching expeditions to you in Canada. But importantly, and most, I think most importantly, we want to use these, this, this material, the real world studies, to empower our students. Students are the next generation, and if we want to continue the legacy of what we're doing as Camps International, but actually what we're doing across the globe to perhaps reach the sustainable development goals, we need to empower young people and get them aware of these issues, but also getting them thinking about how to solve some of the issues that the globe is facing. So real world studies is developed by teachers. This is not something that has been developed by somebody in an office. This is developed by teachers who are teaching in classrooms as we speak. All of our evidence, which I'll show you in, 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 uh, in a little bit later on in this presentation, and all of our materials are interactive and based on real life evidence and real life data that we have collated for you. All of this is aligned to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, which is a key feature of curriculums from across the globe, all supported on real life case studies from our very unique network. We have, as Damien said, we have camps from uh, across the world in many different countries, many different countries that are very contrasting, but actually have many similar issues. A real world studies program is also an opportunity to explore some real life issues that are ongoing across the globe, from poverty to ecological um, deforestation um, and also um, animal welfare. So our work is multifaceted in terms of the subject content and the issues that we are approaching. We also want Real World Studies to showcase the work, the projects and accomplishments that Camps International has done in its, in its nearly 20 years of working. And actually, what has that impact been? 
And as I mentioned there earlier, we want it to empower young people to make change within the world. And if we want our young people to make change, then they need to learn about how to make change. And I suppose this is where real world studies comes in. So at present, the resources of real world studies are focused around nine case studies from across the camps network, all linked to 17 sustainable development goals, which can be applied to five national curriculums from across the world, including GCSE in the UK, the International Baccalaureate, and also your national curriculum there in Canada. At present, we have over 100 resources for teachers and students, and this is only the beginning, because we have now endless opportunities for you as teachers and for your students to connect with these people who are in our network across the globe and have some really meaningful and impactful conversations and learning experiences that perhaps we wouldn't be able to have if COVID, um, because of COVID. So part of the background for creating real world studies was looking at these challenges in schools. Teachers this year are beyond stretched. Our time is precious. We're managing curriculum content and time off. The UK has just gone into another lockdown. And as a result, how is that going to affect lesson time and education? We were in lockdown over here in the United Arab Emirates for around three months where schools were completely closed. So our time as teachers is precious and we need to help our teachers and support them with trying to fill that time. At the moment, we have global school travel bans. When will that continue? We don't know. We're trying to cover curriculums and exam specifications in very little time. We've got to now teach whole new specs, whole new specifications in half the amount of time. I'm sure this is similar in, uh, in Canada, but at the moment there are restrictions to lessons. Their movement of visit, um, around schools is very limited. Our students are sat in classrooms for long periods of time throughout the day, not being able to have that freedom to explore and learn that they have before. We have a very limited scope for any extracurricular activities and leadership in schools are perhaps reluctant to start booking travel without clear safety guarantees, but importantly, without clear educational value moving forward. We have schools that have got staff and student absent and illnesses. We've had, uh, in the last three weeks, we've had 20% of our staff force over here off school. And we have blended learning. Some students are in school, some aren't. Now, I'm sure some of these issues you are experiencing as well in Canada, but we designed real world studies to have, help schools with some of these challenges. So here are some of the benefits that real world studies can have with you in your classroom and your teachers. We can bring some of our camps global destinations to you in your classroom. The resources have been designed to be used either in curriculum time or in extracurricular clubs or sessions. They're going to showcase the world without actually traveling. Now, as soon as we can get traveling again, I know everybody will be wanting to, but at the moment, let's bring the travel to these people and to our students in schools. We need to excite staff and students to travel once again. We want to grow that confidence that when the world goes back to whatever the new normal is, that travel is going to feature. We want to support schools and school agendas and school curriculums with not just some lesson plans, but some quality resources that are usable, engaging and adaptable for students. We want to give students an opportunity to speak to people across the world, speak to people who are delivering some of these projects, who are working with local people. The resources were designed to be used in school or online, which I'll demonstrate to you in a few minutes. But we also want to help teachers by preparing lessons and resources that can be used for te by teachers that are impactful, meaningful, and ultimately engaging. We also have that ded dedicated educator link. And there, as I said, we have a team of educators who have worked on this project and who have designed these resources to help teachers. And we are there to help support teachers from across the world adapt these resources to their individual curriculum 
or their individual school's needs. So at present, we have seven countries with seven sets of materials. Now, this is only the beginning of what we're, be, what we're our Real World Studies project is. From wildlife conservation in Costa Rica, to housing and welfare in Tanzania, and the issue of plastics in Borneo. Our, our resources cover a range of, of unique and important issues from across the globe. And hopefully you'll have chance in the coming weeks to have an explorer of our resources and to have a look at them in an individual level. But let's just show you and demonstrate to you what these resources do actually look like. So I've taken here our Kenya resources, which focus on sustainable livelihoods and gender equality. So within that set of resources at the moment, we have lesson plans, we have pre-recorded presentations, presentations that you as teachers can take, use and do at your own pace. Around this, we have worksheets from across the world. Gen um, uh, worksheets that are getting students to explore the destinations, to explore issues of gender equality in this case in Kenya, to worksheets that link the work in Kenya and the issues in Kenya to the sustainable development goals, evaluating the projects that are ongoing by camps in these areas. But most importantly, if we look down here at number 13, decision-making tasks that get students to be thinking about how they can make an impact moving forward and improve sustainable livelihoods. Every single resource pack also has sources and further reading to stretch and challenge your students moving forward, but also we have key questions and key discussion points that you can take further and you can adapt to the needs of your school. Now this, what you see in front of you just here, is literally a taster of some of the resources that we have from across our destinations. Importantly, the way we designed all our resources are based around design thinking. Design thinking is a critical part of how Campus International run their projects and run what we're doing in countries. And we want that, that process, that way of modeling and managing projects to kind of be instilled in students. We want students to get involved in this process. Because if our students can identify issues, can create ideas, can think about how to run projects and how to improve them, we're going to boost their critical thinking. We're going to boost their collaboration. We're going to boost leadership, communication, and ultimately we're going to improve their global citizenship. So all of our resources follow this model and every single worksheet and every single task is somehow tailored to each of these sections. What is the issue? What is the project? How do we improve that project? So with all of these resources and all of these ideas, there's, there's endless opportunities for you to take this as teachers and to teach it to your students in whatever way you think. But what we're suggesting is we have our pathways program, our learning pathways, and these are suggestions of how we think that teachers can use our resources to teach global issues. So based around, around three unique pathways that are individualized and can be chosen by you as the teacher. Do you want to look at reducing global poverty? Does your focus in school want to be protecting biodiversity? Or do you want to explore human development? And through each of these pathways, we are directing teachers to various resources that will help students understand the connectivity of issues across the globe. What we don't want to do is teach about poverty in Cambodia in isolation, because poverty is a much bigger issue than that that, lasts, that spreads across the entire world. So rather than just focusing on, on Cambodia, in pathway one, reducing global poverty, students will explore poverty not just in Cambodia, but in Tanzania, in Peru, in Kenya. And hopefully by exploring using our resources in, a, in an investigative manner, the students will develop a connectivity and a broader and deeper understanding of some of the issues that are ongoing in our world. If they understand these issues to a deep level, then the students are going to be more informed to make relevant and informed judgments about how to help solve these problems 
and ultimately meet some of the, the sustainable development goals. We've also suggested in, in our documentation how to use these resources, either standalone or through a six or a 10 week session program, where we have guided you as teachers into this is what you can do over a six or a 10 week period, whether this be in, as I said earlier, within your curriculum, whether this be within your school lunch times, or as an opportunity for an extracurricular activity, which is controlled given the COVID restrictions. So here in front of us, we have the six weeks teaching schedule. This one uh, it would be following a single pathway, looking at a country of your choice and exploring a, a issue such as poverty in a really focused manner. But if you wanted to, as a teacher, to go and explore some of these issues in much greater depth, then we suggest our 10 weeks programme, which should focus on more than one destination and will embed some of this deep learning and get students to really reflect on, on what they're learning and the impact that uh, some of these projects are having in our locations. All of these materials you will have access to after this. So there you can have a study of what these six and 10 week programs uh, look like at your, own, at your own leisure. But ultimately, and this is kind of the, the, the most unique thing with our real world studies program, that we're not just providing a set of resources for you to use as a teacher. We are giving you the opportunity completely free of charge to connect with CAPS. And at present, there is no other opportunity like this offered by any other travel company that we know of. We're using our fully bespoke personalized experience, which is designed by you to speak directly to our project managers and our in-country staff who are experiencing the problems, who are delivering the projects and who are seeing the impacts. We believe that this has the power to make the learning real, to give the students access to real people, real lives and real issues. This, of course, is all student led and gives those students opportunities to ask questions and present ideas to our local teams to help drive the project forward, to help have that big impact and to help us as a company with our camps effect improving people's lives and educating people about the world. This we feel is a really unique opportunity that I would like to show uh, with some of our resources just here in a little bit more detail. So what do the resources actually look like? Here are, for example, all of these resources that I'm about to show here are based on Ecuador. Um, we chose Ecuador as it's one of our, our it's an, incredible location where we've had some really impactful projects over the last few years. So both of these resources here are resources that help students explore the destinations. Engaging them through Instagram and using images is something really powerful in terms of um, metacognition in the, at the moment. A lot of research has been done um, across the educational network around the globe on the moment about the use of imagery. And let's engage students with images we can't take them somewhere but let's use what they love instagram for example to get them to explore what a country is like there are tasks and activities that get students to use google and google maps to start diving into a country zooming in on the features and trying to engage with the landscapes and the cultures and the architecture of what makes a country like ecuador such a special country we also have a number of resources that help you to investigate the issues. You don't have to be a subject expert on Ecuador to be able to use these resources. Our presentations are supported by, um, by data from well-known resources such as the World Bank. We discuss in depth the issues that Ecuador is facing or other destination countries, and then support some of that with student independent research on in this case as you can see on the right hand side of the screen why is the rainforest so important and we've got here some plants that are used as, uh, for medicinal properties by local tribes and, and indigenous populations so what we're hoping to do with our resources is not just teach students about the issues in ecuador but also highlight to students in this case 
the importance of these uh, ecosystems to people and the importance of culture um, for um, the people of Ecuador. We have resources that are linked to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. What are the Sustainable Development Goals? What challenges do companies and, and charities such as Campus International face when trying to improve some of these issues? What are the Sustainable Development Goals in terms of what do they mean? Which of the Sustainable Development Goals is going to be the easiest perhaps achieve in Ecuador? And each of our resources guide you and your students through some of these complex and challenging um, ideas and concepts that we want to instill in our students. As I said a few moments ago, that our resources are designed to support the non-specialists with, for example, here on the left hand side, here is a link to maths interpretation of graphs and actually a guide underneath of how students should access, look and interpret this data. Data is a really important aspect of, of uh, what we do um, and in, in, ca in camps and in delivering projects. And actually, it's something that we need our students to be able to do and interpret as well. So throughout our resources, we have a number of evidence-based statistics that support and enhance the learning that is going on within our resources. All of the resources are linked to real life camp projects and we don't just talk about what the project is. We as a as a educational sort of organization now so to speak are actually looking at the advantages and the disadvantages of these projects. Well what's good about them? What's bad about them? What do we need to do to improve? How can we make these projects much more impactful? And we've also supported this on the, as you can see on the left hand side here with what is the impact? Actually, what have as, as camps done in the schools and in the areas to actually make an impact for local people? And ultimately, all of our resources are about empowering students to make decisions. So every single set of resources that we have linked to one of our destination countries has a decision making element. Now, this decision making element is based on real life decision making that our project managers have to do in country. This one here in front of us is what should Camps International do in Ecuador around deforestation? And we want to present this decision making to the students. What do they think is going to be um, the best option in this case, Ecuador? Should we be preventing deforestation? Should we stop deforestation altogether? to focus on restoring wildlife? Should we be developing other ways of getting local people to earn an income from the forest? Or should we phase out and educate young people on how to make money through different methods? For example, in some of our other projects, we have a decision-making about building houses. What family do we give a house to within a community? How do we improve food supplies in rural Cambodia? And how do we make sure that, where, where do we build toilets in Peru? These are all decision-making activities that the students should, um, can get engaged in and can use their learning to really help make an impact. All of these decision-making and all of these resources are also backed by true quotes and statistics from people on the ground. So you can see here, we've got a, a range of stakeholder views for and against deforestation in this case, from some of our camp managers to quotes from the head of the United Nations Development uh, Department of Economic and Social Affairs to news articles. We've tried to give students a range of viewpoints and opinions that can help engage them with critical thinking and choosing what and how to improve projects and make a bigger impact in local communities. At the moment, Camps International are currently working on a range of other documents. We're currently working on CAS documentation for IB programs. We're currently developing more curriculum documents. How you could run real world studies in a week, how you could run real world studies in a day. But the campus education team can work with you and your school 
to create bespoke programs to support you and your school's individual context and requirements. We will have um, in the coming weeks our own dedicated page on our website that is, is going to be launching very, very soon. So more information can be found there. But now I'd like to uh, give the opportunity for, for you to ask questions um, and I, we will answer some of your questions. But please feel free to contact Campus International and we can give you a little bit more depth and a little bit more um, information about what our Real World Studies programme is. I hope that you found that um, short presentation uh, um, interesting and useful. Um, and uh, Katie, um, I believe that there might be maybe a few questions for us. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Chris, for talking um, through all of that with us. Uh, yeah, we've got a couple of questions um, which we'll whiz through. Um, so thank you so much for sharing those with us. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we answer every question that you have. Um, so the first one was whether if we're speaking to individuals about the resources and how we can create a teaching programme, whether that would be in real time or, or over just email. Um, and because we've got a full team at camps who are running this, we do have a lot of different people that can um, speak to you in real time. So, you know, we are fully virtual, so we can do it either via a video call, you know, we work on Zoom teams or whatever capacity best suits you. Um, so it might be that initially we set up a meeting together via email, but then, you know, we prefer to do things face to face. So to be honest, we would, if that best suits you, do it via a video call um, so that we can just chat through it together. The, together we get a better picture of your school as well. Um, the uh, the second question that we had was, um, you know, for those students that haven't necessarily got that opportunity to travel, although we want to make these as accessible to everybody as possible, there are always that handful of students that, you know, don't choose to or it's just not appropriate for them at that particular time. Um, so the idea of these sessions is to bring that opportunity to them. So in terms of them getting access to these resources through the lesson plans, this is very much for teachers to use as part of their everyday in class. So every single student is gaining access to the understanding of these global issues. Um, so, you know, if they're not able to travel, they can speak to our people out in country and still have that really lovely, unique cultural exchange. They can still gain a deeper understanding of the projects that way. Um, and by going through this in their lessons and things, they are really getting that understanding. Um, obviously, travel is sort of on pause around the world for, for quite a few countries. So this is the way that we can bring it to the students during this current pandemic, but also further down into the future. So for those handful of students that aren't travel, although they won't gain that access to, to the, the, the portion that we do on expedition, that kind of real life going in and getting their hands on those um, shovels and, and getting involved themselves, they will get all of the rest of it in terms of the lead up to, um, to all the resources and, and get that understanding um, of the global issues. So, you know, if they don't travel, they're still going to get the majority of the learning, which is brilliant. Um, in terms of feedback from educators, we have had lots of really positive feedback from teachers across the globe. Um, one of the teachers, I've got a quote here that I'll just share with you um, from a school in the UK. Um, was talking about the fact that it so she says here it was fantastic for the students who to have the opportunity to learn firsthand from the staff on the ground <clears throat> who shared their experiences with the students this is exactly what we need not only um, that but the live webinar that we did for them uh, covered so many areas of the curriculum and she thought it was really brilliant um, and thanked us for the opportunity so from the feedback we've had so far teachers are really appreciative of the support that we're offering to them um, but also love the interactive nature of that connect with camps and the fact that it links to so many different areas of their national curriculum. Um, in terms of the um, question about whether there is a catch in terms of these resources, um, I'm going to pass over to Damien who's going to answer that one for us. Sorry, um, there was a question about um, uh, academic credits as well, and I think we're going to have to leave that to Chris or to the or, or to the real the world strides people in Canada. Um, there was a question here about is there a catch, uh, and do I need to commit to travel, and do we need to buy something off camps? Um, and I I want I asked Katie if I could answer that one because I want to answer it very openly and honestly. 
um, as Katie would, of course, but I think it's my role in this in this conversation. And no, there really isn't a catch, and and I I desperately don't want us. You don't know us. Uh, you don't know me. Um, and I don't want to sound like we're trying to hide something. What uh, I think, in my experience of 2020, that the world's changed a little bit. Um, and my relationships here that I have with providers are quite often quite different because because we we all understand that there's a sort of mutual support that's necessary. And I hope I don't sound naive when I say that. Um, uh, so what we see this as being is uh, we we are a business and we need to, to we need to uh, make money. So um, we we have groups that travel with us, and that's a great thing. But what we're doing, and if this answers one of the other questions on here as well, is we will have in about two weeks' time all of these materials will be available uh, online. At the moment, you'll need to get them through uh, the World Stride, your World Strides contact, um, but they can be emailed to you. They're free. They're available to you. You can do what you like with them in terms of their flexibility for their, your teaching approach. And if that's all that happens, we're perfectly happy. They're great, and, and we can have interaction with our guys in country, with students in other countries, and I think there's a benefit all around through that. It would be great if a proportion of those lead to travel. And yes, honestly, we have to hope that that's the case. And I believe that in terms of the educational uh, impact that's available here, the golden ticket is yes, it leads to travel, but if it doesn't, that's okay. It's fine. Um, with this is a live collaborative project. The online space is a space in which we hope we will have uh, eventually we'll have a forum, um, and teachers can uh, adapt documents. They can look at them. They can put their own up there, and we establish a space in which teachers are working together using the links to our projects for the better education of their students, and that's what we want. And we hope that some of those will, will lead to travel as well. Um, so no, there isn't a catch. Um, and it would be my answer as well if we could build a camp in the north of Canada. And I just really like that idea. Um, because I'm the director responsible for the Americas, it would be my job. So if you're offering, offering to show me around the north of Canada, I'm on my way. I'll bring a coat. Um, and I really like the idea. Um, just on the on the back of what Damien was just saying there, there was a question um, about uh, grades and uh, what resources, uh, what grades these resources are accessible for. Now, we've designed these resources in a way that you, as the professional, as the teacher, can adapt this resource to match whatever grade that you're looking for. And also, actually, to, this, to your students' interests, particularly at the moment with what's going on in the world, I think that's really important that, that we can engage our students in something they're interested in. Um, and actually, um, the resources are, are not just you've got to use all of them. This is answering another question at the same time here. Um, but actually, you can choose aspects of the resources to use. Obviously, we would like you to use all of them, but you can, of course, pick and choose what lessons or resources you want to use. Um, but actually, we want you to go away and adapt them to your students and to your various different grades. I suppose we've kind of focused on grades six, seven and above. Um, eight, nine, 10, 11, all the way up. Um, definitely sort of high school, secondary is, is where we're going. But there is absolutely no reason whatsoever why you as a teacher, if you feel that your younger students will benefit from some of this, then please go ahead, use our resources and adapt them. And obviously, as Damien mentioned a few moments ago, just there, actually what we would like to see is a forum put together where teachers from across the globe can share their ideas and, and share what they, they're doing with their students to have an impact uh, and to teach about real world problems that are affecting everybody and every single one of us um, across um, the globe. Another question here was mentioned about um, comparing and contrasting some of these resources such as deforestation in Costa Rica with Canada. Absolutely. There is scope for you as a teacher to, to compare some of these issues, bring it back to real life into their local areas. Actually, that will be an absolutely fantastic and quite interesting comparison to do, to compare some of these quite poor developing countries with Canada and some of the issues that of deforestation there. 
um, because the can, actual... I just, can I just jump in there, Chris? Because yeah, uh, um, uh, at the moment we're working with in Costa Rica, we're working with a, a school in uh, Hawaii doing exactly that, looking at the impacts of deforestation in a, in a tropical environment of Costa Rica and, and drawing comparisons between that and the, what is familiar to the students in Hawaii. And while I've got the floor, there was another question about curiosity about why this is free um, and what, how this works as a business um, model. Um, the projects are run by camps. We have a foundation and we run as a business. Um, and we run as a social enterprise, so the company attempts to make, uh, to run properly as a, as a profit-making business, and through running properly, we are able to run the camps and the projects in the countries in which we work. We also have a foundation. This real-world studies part, we have um, taken on that as a project um, during this downtime uh, that we've had. So, so Katie's been working away very hard and Chris has been working very hard. There's been a cost to us as a company. It hasn't been massive. Um, and we believe that it, the best way to do this is to make these resources available to people um, to create a dynamic space in which teachers are working with these resources. And I want them to be free and they will forever be free. There will be a membership to the to the space on the website, which we'll ask people to become members of, but there is no request for you to commit to anything. Uh, that's the philosophy behind it. And we've borne a little bit of cost, but it's not it's not uh, out of scale and it's manageable. Perfect, thank you. Um, another one of the questions um, that popped up was whether um, this is something, you know, in terms of the connect with camps, whether that's possible all year round. Absolutely, as Damien and Chris uh, mentioned earlier, because we have permanent staff out in country, they're there all year round. They come from those communities, that's where they live, their families are there. So absolutely, that's something that we can facilitate all year round whenever best suits your students. Um, we had another question as well, which was about um, in terms of the resources, whether you need to choose a six or ten week program or whether you can kind of pick and choose. Um, and the beauty of these resources is that we want you to use them however best suits your school and your students. So if that is a six week program, if it's, you know, you, you need to speak to us and you want to do uh, less than that, more than that, that's absolutely fine. We can kind of create that with you. On the flip side, if you want to use these individual resource packs and do like there was there different days, different sessions, again, it's completely up to you. You can use these and tailor these as much as you want to, to suit your students, your curriculums, your teaching plans, whatever best suits you effectively. Um, then we had some more questions uh, down at the bottom. Yeah, I've, I've just seen a key, um, uh, a question pop up here about uh, once the pandemic is over, if you maintain the virtual resources to help front load the trips experience, that is very much the plan. Uh, this is not something that when COVID eventually does, does oh, I don't think just disappear is the wrong word, but actually this is very much something that is going to be an ongoing thing um, for Camps International. We want to continue uh, to develop this project, to develop this real world studies to enhance trips, enhance expeditions, uh, for when we can travel. This is not something that when we go back to, to normal travel, if that is ever a thing, um, that we will just stop developing and innovating. This is uh, uh, something that we are really pushing. We think it's very, very important. And we think it's a new direction for educational travel um, across, um, across the world. Sorry, Katie. Thank you. No, no, that's absolutely fine. Um, I was just looking at the question that says about the virtual parts of um, the lesson plans. Um, what we've done for each of the sessions is there is a recorded webinar. So in terms of the students that are working remotely, there is that option um, in terms of it being virtual. But then of course, all the resources that we're able to send across to you are accessible via an online platform. So in terms of sending it to the students who are at home, who aren't able to make it into school, it does mean that you can share all of the different aspects with them. Um, and our connect with camps via a video call again that's a virtual session because you're connecting with them via a video call so it doesn't matter where the students are obviously in current times you know bubbles and things like that students aren't able to all be in the same room so it means that actually they can still access that learning through the sort of more virtual platform um, in terms of feedback specifically from the ib program 
I don't know, Damien, did you, sorry, did you want to say something? Uh, no, I, I wasn't, and, and, and uh, it, in, in the context of, a, of an open, honest uh, conversation here, uh, Chris um, uh, is developing, is, is heading up the educational aspects of this, and is developing these programmes. We have we have developed some detailed materials on the CAS element of IB. Uh, this is, you're, you're speaking to us live as we develop these things, and we do so within the context of the pandemic. Um, so we are working with, we're having meetings at the moment, quite a lot of meetings with um, IB teachers so that we can look at the materials and how they're applicable to IB and whether they need to be adapted um, uh, and if anybody who's listening here would be interested in being involved in that conversation we would love to have that conversation with you um, because we, we do you know we're working in the UK, Australia, Canada, the United States all with their different curricula um, and then you've got the IB overlaid on, on top of that so there's, there's quite a lot of work to do, but it's certainly that's something that we're looking into. And we've got and, to and like, like, like answer the question about contacting us further uh, by typing. Chris? Um, and likewise, Damien, one of the other questions that somebody answered sort of on the back of that there was, um, how, wh when is this getting linked to the Ontario um, curriculum? Well, perhaps that's something that you, you can help us with. Um, uh, and that is in development, as Damien said, this is literally the, the very start of this project for us. This is the very beginnings of, of, a, of a much bigger journey that we're going on with, with Real World Studies. Um, and um, linking it to the Ontario curriculum, it'd be great to have your expertise as teachers in Canada to help us to do that um, uh, as part of that collaboration um, as to, you know, we're providing you with, with our materials of what, what's going on, and it'd be great to, to have that. But please do contact us um, if, if that is something you'd be interested in, in, in helping us with. My clock yeah, says... Absolutely. Um, and there's just, um, about off. Yeah, absolutely. There was the one last question, which um, was about the educational academic credit. Um, that's something that we are exploring here in the UK, um, and something that I think you know we might explore in in canada but it's not something that we've currently got set up i don't know if chris you've got any thoughts on uh, that side of things. At, the, at the moment that it is it's a bit too um that's a bit too broad for us at the moment we're not specialists in um in the the canadian curriculum at the moment um eventually uh further down the line yes that is definitely something we would like to um start looking at um but at the moment no it's not but what we want it to do is to enhance whatever that academic credit examination um, sort of a, a assessment model that you have in Canada and actually enhance the lessons, the learning and have a bigger impact on our students through real life examples. Um, so at the moment, no, there isn't um, scope for that perhaps in the future, um, but not not yet at the moment. This is more about enhancing your students' learning and experiences during a very, very Thanks challenging time. Thanks for that. Um, I, I'm going to wrap this up because I'm aware that we've used our hour. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for attending. Um, I said at the beginning of this that we're going to rattle through it and it's going to be very quick. This is quite a broad and complex thing. Camp is quite a broad and complex thing and then we've got real world studies which, which reflects that as well. So, um, apologies if you feel like we've we've rushed through this. If you've got questions, there's an email address in front of you and communicate with us. Um, we're very enthusiastic about this this new project for us, and we believe in its credibility in terms of student travel and student learning within the real world. Um, and therefore, we 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 are looking for a dialogue for communication for involvement from teachers so that this, we established a permanent dynamic project of education that is linked to travel, but also involves just simply virtual links to communities in countries, um, uh, in the countries in which we work. So uh, Katie and Chris, thank you very much for your contributions today. Um, everybody who's here um, with us, thank you um, for taking part and for, for listening to us. And please do continue communicating with us if you've got further questions and obviously through your World Strides, your normal channels with, with World Strides in Canada. And I look forward to hearing from you. And I think we now just press stop. <laughs> <laughs>
I really do think we now just press stop.